McDermott, um, Sharon Galloway. We're down here at the Court of Special Appeals in Annapolis, Maryland, September 2010. I came down here with Sharon today to uh, go through and see her case file. And uh, Sharon, uh, glad to have you here today. Thanks, uh, George. What, what happened when you went to see your case file today? Well, last week, September 24th, I got a letter from the clerk of the court, Leslie Gradad, that said that the judges are going to hear my case on brief. I had requested oral argument and a hearing, but the judges decided on their own to only hear my case on brief, meaning oh. they're going to read it in secret and make up their minds. So I came down here to see if there was an order, because there's no order that came with the letter from the clerk. Nothing. Well, and that's that's the shameful part of this whole process. Uh, I just uh, this weekend filed a uh, tree, uh, uh, a writ of mandamus in the United States Court of Appeals in Richmond, challenging the issuance of unsigned orders that are never in this case file in the file when you get here. And they told Sharon today, what did they tell you, Sharon? I asked to see my file, they said it's not here. I said, where is it? They said, in another part of the state. And that's a direct quote. Yeah. As if, another part of the state. As if they send the original court file out to the state, to all the judges. And that's the first time this has happened to me. Uh, and uh, you can keep getting these unsigned orders and then you can never verify them. They're never in the court file. So I filed a complaint with the U.S. Postal Service for uh, fraud on uh, uh, mail fraud from the court sending out these orders. And you've got a copy of that. Yes. Now, uh, what what's really sad is what did they what did they tell you when you ask about the order? Please enlighten me as to what they told you. I said, well, I came in and I said I wanted to see the file, and we went through all that rigmarole. I said, I need to see the order from the judge, because I need to include it on my motion to um, reinstate. reinstate oral argument. There is no order. That's what the clerk said. So I said, well, how does the clerk find out, and, you know, if, if they're going to be hearing this on brief and not oral argument? And the clerk said, the chief judge calls us. So I said, so there's technically no record of that. And she said, no. Well, see, that's why we had to petition the court because they're not following any of the procedural rules uh, set out in 5 U.S.C. 522. And I had requested a hearing and oral argument. Yeah, but uh, this, is, this is typical. Sharon's going through the same stuff that I've went through time and time and time again. And, on virtually every other pro se litigant, you get the people in the clerk's office using the rubber stamp to dismiss cases that are never shipped out, they're never seen by a judge. The clerks are acting, and the, and the law clerks are acting as judicial officers. And when they do that, everything that they send out un, unsigned, or in your case, was mail fraud. Yeah. Because you don't have any record. They've just denied her relief under the constitutional right, and she has no record because it was a phone call. So what do you do now? Submit the phone record of uh, when the judge called? I am, I am submitting a uh, motion to reinstate oral argument, and um, we'll see how that goes. And I'm also going to be submitting uh, the same because, you know, I got a letter from uh, Judge Eiler one on the 17th of August and one on the 18th of August. Both of them exactly identical to the, to the last dot, except for the date stamps on them from the court. Both of them denying me oral arguments. And I can take that exact order and go all the way back to 1996. And in every case, lay that signature and that order over top. It's exact. They're using a photocopy and they're not getting the authorization of the judge to use that photocopy. So this is just an ever-enlarging, ever-growing fraud and conspiracy. It's systemic fraud.
It's infected everything. Anyway, now it's ready. Well, Sharon, I thank you for being with us today. And it was a let's pleasure. Get, let's get this up on uh, MarylandPortWatch.com and, and uh, we'll see you later. Have a safe trip to Ocean City. Learn from this. It could happen to you. It happens to them every day.